That, that's me, your lighthearted host and expressionist. And this, this is my podcast, Love and Lies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have Dr. Nick Castellano. I'm really excited to interview you. Um, you trained in the United States Nuclear Power Program, okay. master's in biochemistry, doctorate in philosophy and theology. You're an engineer, nuclear instructor for the Navy. You hold two patents in oil well chemistry industry, and you are an author of the book, Awaken the Sleeper. And a new book coming out. And you're working on that. Is it part two of Waken the Sleeper? It's uh, an extension of it, more how-tos. How do I actually do it? Not just what you should do, but how do I do it? Oh, wow. That's going to be very interesting because I thought you put all of that in the book already, but now you're going to go even deeper. Right. Your expertise here is really important because uh, you know all about the power and energy. Um, you speak in this book. What I love about this is that you take science and you take faith and you show proof of both. Right. So somebody who is typically doesn't believe in faith but believes in science, somebody who believes in science, vice versa. Correct. They're at odds against each other. They're at odds against each other, and you're showing this is reason why. This is works the way this the way it does. Right. And because at the beginning, science and and uh, and faith were the same. It was faith, science means scientia, which means knowing, knowing your knowledge. So they wanted to know how God put together stuff better. And what happened is during the, uh, uh, when the, now the Catholics came in, uh, during uh, Emperor Constantine's reign, uh, science became one way, uh, religion went another way. And religion I call man-made rules with no godly purpose. It's, uh, it's not about, it's all about relationship, not religion. And uh, we've twisted into the, all these different religions that separate us instead of unifying us because, as we were talking about earlier, we're all entangled. We're all together. We're all as one. And that's where our strength lies is as one. So science wanted to disprove religion and religion wanted to disprove science and you had to pick a camp. But the truth is, there is only one truth. And uh, we create the reality we live in based on the thoughts and the intents of our heart. And that's what the Bible says. That's what quantum physics says. That's what neuroscience says. That's what it's all about with vibrations and because we do it to so ourselves. I'm totally into this because once I started reading the book and realizing that we have all the power and control and the energy is within us and then what happens when we have a single thought and there's all these, you know, motivational videos on YouTube and, you know, scrolling through our smartphones right. and we get hyped up but we don't realize what's actually happening scientifically right. uh in the world in our own world right. when we're listening to that but we also don't know how to apply it you can't just sit there and think positive right. and then create change you can but that even you're feeding a thought so before i get ahead of myself okay. what was your intention in writing this book my intention was to empower people to understand their greatness i mean you know, if you get better and understand and you raise up to a higher level, you've raised me up to a higher level. So our, our goal is, is to make ourselves as great as we can be so that others are not afraid to be great as well. We lay pavement for others to drive on. That's the perfect platform for Love and Lies podcast. Just want to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. Okay. Now, before the listeners get turned off real quick because they think, eh, this is going to be about you know, electrons and qons, and mm. it will be a little bit. A little bit. Uh, and then faith. Uh, let's talk about your personal story because okay. you got here a certain way. Yeah, I did. Something happened. Tell us about your rowdy days. Well, I was raised uh, uh, oldest of six kids in an Italian family, Catholic. And uh, we had, um, you know, my, my dad drank, my grandfather drank, my great-grandfather drank, and they didn't drink. They drank a lot. My dad used to have, I don't know, 20 bourbons and sevens a night and uh wow you know and then he helped me study for a test and that was oh, always wow. fun. oh yeah that was, that was amazing <laughs> i got straight a's in school because if i could help if i could understand that i was good so uh the uh you know i was in the navy i'm teaching nuclear power uh, chemistry and i kept ending up in jail and i'm like why am i ending up in jail and and i finally 
sitting in the cell uh, the third time I was in jail, I realized I connected the dots that uh, maybe, just maybe, drinking was a problem for me. And so I decided, I said, you know what, I'm going to break this curse that keeps getting passed on from generation to generation. And I said, no more. When I said, please take this from me, I, it was like, finally is what I heard back, finally. And then I started my search for the truth of what is the truth, because I was a nuclear chemist and we have certain beliefs and all of a sudden there was a spiritual realm and it was like fighting each other. So I started a truth, uh, a truth search, if you will. So, so you recognize the cycle in your dad and then you're like, I got to stop this madness because mm -hmm. you keep on ending up in jail and yeah. you're the only one that's in jail. Well, I was, <laughs> no matter who you're beating up, you called the, the guys that came out with the beer muscles. Beer muscles, little guys, yeah. Uh, explain what quantum physics is in layman's terms well, for all of us. Quantum physics is really the... the We've learned the Bohr model, how the atom works, how everything works, but quantum physics is that next level. It's, it's telling us that, uh, you know, there is nothing but energy. Two pro, a proton and a neutron are made up of something called quarks. Quarks are energy packets. Two up quarks and a down quarks is a, a proton, two down quarks are a quarks of neutron. The point is, we all know about the atom, and then protons and neutrons are quarks, but then there's the electron. So uh, they're so happy because the electron is at least my little piece of matter, my little Pluto going around in a circle, <laughs> my little moon going around. And then they did something called the double slit experiment. And the double slit experiment showed that only when the observer looked on the thing and expected it to be, was it acting like a particle. But when no one was observing it, it acted like a wave function. Okay, so this, um, you're, so, you're so smart. Let me explain this to the listeners because this is what fascinated me. You're talking about the experiment where they were listening, where they gave uh, the listener, they said, you're going to hear 100%. No, that's not the one. I was talking okay. about the double slit experiment. This is the one where they actually did the test over and over. Dr. Fenneman did this, and it's been done millions of times, and the same thing always happens. When they believe that this electron will show up, it does when they look on it. So here's what happened. They just kept doing this test over and over. They did it on the macro level, and they showed what a wave function looks like when it goes through two slits. Then they took it micro and went and shot these little photons through. These are little electrons through these two slits, and they expected it to be boom, 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 boom just two little lines of, of solid matter. But it wasn't. It was a wave function, which means there's one line, two line, three line, darker line, lighter line, lighter line, lighter line. What that meant is, why, why is it acting like a wave function? So they said, let's look at it. And they put a giant meter on to monitor it. And they looked at it. And as soon as they looked at it, it didn't act that way anymore. It was because their focus of their thought. Their thought took what was unseen and a potential and made it so where they expected it. See, the problem with our lives is we're always right. So if we believe bad things happen in three, we're right. If we believe that there's a yin and a yang, we're right. If we believe that we can go from glory to glory to glory, we're right as well. So the universe is going to make us right because it thinks we know that we're in charge. Does that make the sense? The universe thinks that we know that we're in charge. That we're in charge. We're the boss of me. Every two-year-old knows that. You're not the boss of me. I'm the boss of me. And so based on the thoughts and the intents of our heart, we create the reality we think we deserve. Right. So if we don't feel like we deserve it, then we're getting stuff that we don't deserve. It always happens to me. Bad things always happen. It's always going this way for me. And as soon as you believe that to be a truth, it is. It is. Yep. So um, you had used, let's talk about Q-ons. This is like, okay. so you have, I know this is probably like the simplest for everybody, but I am like, it's not simple, this no. has seduced me. Okay. I absolutely have fallen in love with the science side of manifestation. I don't think I'll ever be able to sit down and manifest <coughs> and meditate the same ever again after reading your book. It has completely, totally empowered me. And yeah. thankfully, I, I just, I'll never be the same. And that's why I really wanted to get you in here to interview you. But just simple q on. Uh, QRs, electrons. This is like a simple little thought. You have a thought. We have uh, how many thoughts do we have in a day? In yeah. a minute, in an hour. So this is just a thought. Where does it go? The Q on is like a spark. Yeah. And then how does a Q on change? Well, to, what happens is is it a uh, hadron? Hadron. Hadron. Yeah, Q on hadrons. 
they become now you're focusing on it. You're still making it. You're still believing it. Oh my gosh, but something bad's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And then it becomes electrons and you're pulling it now from this unseen realm of all these potentials. You, you know, right now I can do a million things. I can come here. I can jump up and down. I can run over there and run through the wall. I can do anything, but I make a choice which one I'm going to do. And that choice has a fruit. If I choose this, then I'm going to get a, a fruit from the universe on how it works. And so, you know. Because the universe knows that, thinks that you know that you're in charge. You're in charge. And so how many people are just dreary and dull all the time and so sad and, uh, uh, and all they're attracting is more sad and more. Because it thinks, oh, you must want that. You must want fear, lack, and worry in your life because you're creating from a place of fear, lack, and worry. But true creation, the good stuff, comes from a place of peace, joy, and love. So we don't wait for good stuff to happen to get in peace, joy, and love. We get in peace, joy, and love, and good stuff happens. Right. And so the people that are out there thinking positive stuff all the time, then that's why if you're sitting over there thinking that, you know, Becky has everything happening for her, it's because she's thinking more than likely. I mean, some it's some process. I mean, everything in your life is a fruit of what you're thinking of. It's a, it it's, is proof of how you are it, thinking. That's the truth. It, it, whatever you're thinking, I'll look at around you, see what you've got in your life. You can see what you've created and what you don't like. Now you know you've got to think a new thought. You've got to think a new way. You've got to, and the hard thing is getting the head because just saying things positive over and over again doesn't do anything. You've got to get the heart, the energy packet aligned with the head so that it can be. Right. So the initial thought of doing a podcast and then focusing on that, giving it feeling, putting my heart, and now time after here we are doing that, it's been created just from a thought, from a cue on. From a thought. We have, <laughs> we have evolved. Uh, yeah, but a, a thought, that you, a thought right. that you nurtured. You nurtured Absolutely. it. You gave it. The dog you feed is the dog that lives, right? Right. So if you keep feeding the dog of lack, fear, and worry, you're going to keep getting lack, fear, and worry in your life. But if you feel the dog of peace, joy, love, good stuff in your life, you'll keep getting that stuff. In your so life. it wasn't that I had just faith and a vision in this. While I'm having the faith and vision, I was it was scientifically creating. Here's how you want reality how it works? coming into the into the scene well, from the unseen. Well, here's how, here's how it works in, the, in a the, force. It's a force, and and the thing is, we think a thought. Okay, so we got that thought. Now, an emotion is attached to that thought because we see a picture. Now we got that emotion. So what happens is there's so many uh, neuropeptides getting ready to get released based on that emotion. So they get released into your body and they key lock into your cells. And it, you know, there's pictures of them actually key locking into cells. And then you start to vibrate at a certain frequency. Now, when you vibrate at that frequency, it's whatever frequency you're at. Fear, lack, worry, case, or or whatever will be, will be, or peace, love, and joy. You attract that kind of stuff back into your life based on your vibrational frequency. You know, you can tell when somebody walks in a room and they're not feeling good about themselves. You, you know, this is the spiritual realm. You go, ooh, what's wrong with that person? Now, they didn't say a word, but right. you felt it right? Mm -hmm. It's that they're vibrating at a low frequency. Or you can see somebody that's so confident in themselves and they walk in and they have that look in their eye and you go, whoa, who's that? And that's what you're attracting. They're making you feel. So them walking in the room all positive also makes you feel positive and, and good. And people treat and you, you positive. And you, want it, and you want that. So that's what you're. So thoughts are like light lasers. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are focused energy packets. You know, you have a thought. And then you give power to it when you believe it to be true and you speak it. And there it is. It is true. Uh, you can override your thoughts. This is what I think is a, a big um, part of what fascinates me is it's because we think so many thoughts a day, uh, positive, negative. And 90% of them are negative. Negative. That's the, the sad part. Right. Uh, that we can override our thoughts. So if you have a constant thought that's negative, no matter what it is, you can override that by speaking out against it, against it, yeah. something positive. So you can actually rewire your mind you can. and cause yourself to create mm -hmm. a new reality, a new reality yeah. just by, so you're having these negative thoughts driving. So it's really important. You're driving in the car mm -hmm. and it's all these places that you're kind of like automatically thinking this, this, the same 
theme song in the back of your mind. Playing over and over again. Right. You right. pay attention to that. You can start rewiring that, writing a new song in your life for with just speaking out loud against what it is that you're saying. Exactly. You're saying, oh. Uh, it, it's going to be bad. I'm, I think I'm going to make it. It looks like I'm almost going to make it, but every time I make it, if I fumble the ball, I'm just not worthy. I'm not good enough. No, you're amazing. You're a creature of God. You're, you're, the, you're the righteousness. You're, you know, and you just keep countering it with a positive and faith comes by hearing what you hear you believe right that's the other thing whatever you are speaking out your mind cannot think the opposite of it that's right that's the it, power it can't go against what you're thinking so if you're speaking it out it's rewiring the mind and uh is this where the i am comes that's where from? the i am statement comes from you know for me the i am statement is so important because it it says when I'm going through a negative place, I go, okay, get my I am statement out. Who am I? And then I read it out loud and I believe my own voice. We, we used to, so when I believe me and I hear me saying these things and then I keep speaking it and speaking it till I actually start to believe it again in my heart, then it gets rid of all that negativity. You shared something with me that I thought was so cool. You actually record your own voice saying your I am statements and you play it with alpha, alpha with, theta, with alpha theta waves in the background because that allows my subconscious to receive it as a truth instead of going through all the conscious stuff. It goes right into the subconscious, and now I can receive it in my truth, in my subconscious, in my heart, and so it become, can become so. How long does it take for uh, change to happen once you start? Instantaneously or a long time. It's all up to the individual. Can they believe that's really true? Or are they going to look for every reason why it's not true so they can justify why their life has nothing good in it? So that goes back to um, you can have a thought, not have the heart line up, the mind line up with the heart yet. But if you're speaking it out, scientifically, it's changing your reality. And after days or time, after time, it will sync up and then you'll start believing the is, what it is that you actually yeah, exactly. are saying. So you got to stay to it. Right. Even if you're not totally believing in well, what you're they, saying. Well, you say, fake it, right till you, fake it till you make it. But, but you just keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying it. And then all of a sudden you start to believe it. Now it's starting to have power. Right. Before it was just mm -hmm. countering other stuff. But as soon as mm -hmm. you start to believe it, now it has power. Now you know who you are. You know you control that stuff. And as soon as you know, it can be. Uh, the other thing about your book is that it puts all the accountability on us. Mm-hmm. And the people that really don't want to think that this is real is really kind of like refusing accountability for their life. Um, yes. Whether they believe in it or whether they don't, the truth is they're in charge. You're in charge of your life. And so shit happens, yeah, right? Yeah. What happens when the shit happens? We just override it, we rise above it. Um, no, the I, victim I, I, mentality, well, that happened to right. me when I was. You know, I was, I was improperly touched by the priest when I was whatever. And then you use that for an excuse for failure the rest of your life. So, you know, it's up to you. It's for up you to, to you. override it and you rise can, above it. You're not a being of time. You can elevate above time. I had, I'll tell you a personal story. My, my father made fun of me in front of all of my friends. And uh, we were, we used to march from place to place during Christmas and sing carols. And I was having a great time, and then he made fun of me. I was about six, and it crushed me because he had made fun of me in front of everyone because it was a really hurtful, mm -hmm. right? So I had to learn, because when I hold on to resent, the only person that really is being affected is me. I'm carrying a load I wasn't meant to carry. So I have to learn how to, how do I forgive my father? How do I get through? So I go back in time. I find out he was working three jobs. You know, he was doing a lot of stuff. He didn't think he had enough money to pay for six kids for Christmas. And then all of a sudden you see him in that eyesight, in an older person's eyesight, not a six-year-old kid's eyesight. Mm -hmm. And you go, I got it. You forgive. When you forgive, your whole life changes. So holding on to the negative vibration of hate, anger, um, being disappointed, yep. uh, all of that is keep is holding you hostage but you're holding your own self hostage because you're not breaking free you're your own jailer and you're very harsh on yourself yeah 
So, you are. So that's what we've got to understand is that if we've got a place where we need a breakthrough, you've got the power to change it, but all the power comes from within. Because when you change within, without changes. Right. Uh, that's really important to talk about because we may feel and we may act like we feel good and that we have our life together and we've got the husband or the wife and the family or the job or the car or the this or the that. But the truth is, is um, we all have a childhood. We all have a history. We all have a past and things that we may not be proud of or things that we wish never happened or changed. Uh, if we hold on to that, even the slightest in our heart and our mind, that is holding us back in all areas of our life. True. And we can't put, we're not fooling anybody but mm-hmm. ourselves. That's right. You know, and we can find what we seek at that point is other people agreeing us with that, agreeing with us how bad that was because we want to be right. Right. We want to feel better. So we're going to feel better hanging out with a bunch of victims like us instead of saying, no, I'm going to be a victor and I'm going to reframe this whole story so that I can move on to the next level. Were you um, religious all your life? I was Catholic. So that's about as religious as you can be. <laughs> but uh, it wasn't uh, spirituality. Spirituality is a relationship. And that's the important thing is getting that, that there is a spirit realm. And the spirit realm creates the physical realm. Everything comes from the unseen to the seen. And once we get that, we can see how much po- power we actually have. So you were raised Catholic and mm-hmm. then, you know, uh, scientists and doing all those things, mm. um, drinking, mm. and then you all of a sudden say, I've got to stop this madness, mm-hmm. and it changed. You went into faith, you went into truth, yep. and now you're doing all of this. You're sharing the word, you're writing books, and you also have, I mean, you're always doing something. <laughs> <laughs> to I teach too. business mentorship. Yeah, you do. business thing, yeah. Uh, okay, so being grateful for what God has entrusted in you. Mm-hmm. Gratitude, an attitude of gratitude, right? It, what is the highest vibration that you can have? Is it gratitude versus uh, I, love? I, I think love is the highest vibration. Okay. Unconditional, though it's not the world love. It's something called agape or unconditional. No matter what you do, I love you. It doesn't matter. And I'm always rooting for you. And when you succeed, I feel great. But the world teaches us that if you succeed, I'm less than. Then I, I have I, now. Now I'm, I'm actually trying to push you down from succeeding, and that's not right. So our our job is to love unconditionally, and want to see everybody succeed. When you uh, wrote your book, you talked about creating your day mm. with feeling. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk to us about that. Well, that was a big one. Um, I had heard all this neuroscience, quantum physics. I'd have been doing all the study and I go, I'm going to create my day. And so what I did was I sat and I learned how to meditate. And that took a long time because there's like a monkey jumping around in your brain and it doesn't want to stop. And you never meditated before. Never in my life. You're just learning about, you have all the science background. You're now learning about faith. You're putting the two together and you're like, mm. I'm going to see what happens. This is the wacky I- stuff. I'm a nuclear chemist. What am I doing sitting here and talking to God and meditating and stuff? So I got quiet. And the hardest thing was getting quiet, mm-hmm. quieting down the brain so that you can actually be in the now moment because the only time we have power is now. But most of the time we spend so much time in regret of yesterday or fear of tomorrow. And we're, I used to say, pissing all over today. We got one foot in yesterday, one foot in tomorrow. So the, the key is that we, we've got to get now. When I get now, what I saw was I got, you know, being an old Catholic boy, I get raised up into heaven and Peter's helping me because he's the guy that opens the gate, right? <laughs> and he, he opens the gate for me. And anyway, uh, I go inside and there was Jesus, this big, tall, good looking dude with green eyes. I don't know why he had green eyes, but he did. And he came over, he gave me a hug and he handed me this white robe and he says, Papa wants to see you. And I went, Papa wants to see me. So I'm going into the throne room and I'm getting all scared because it's God. And anytime I went in to see my dad, it was something good. I'd done something wrong. Right. Uh huh. And I'm walking into the throne room, and I went, no, wait, the Bible says to go boldly before the throne. So I throw back my shoulder, put my head up like I'm a prince, and I start walking forward. And then there's all this stuff happening in heaven in my mind's eye. And there's God sitting on the throne, and there's cherubim, and there's the 24 elders and all this stuff. And he sees me out of the corner of his eye, and he goes, shh, my son approaches. 
And I'm like, Where, where's Jesus must be here. Some, and then I realize she's talking about me. And I, I tear up like crazy every time I tell it. And then I kept walking and I'm, I'm 6'4", 265. And, and I stood up and looked at God and I said, Papa, can I sit on your lap? And he picks me up laughing, puts me on his lap. And I'm there in that now moment, hugging him, feeling him, smelling him. And he, he goes, what do you want to do? I said, let's create the day together today. So the first time I did that, I created, in my mind, my stock that I had for 500,000 shares. Well, the next day, it goes actual public. It hadn't been public in three years. It goes public at $7 a share. So in one day, I went from just making it to $3.5 million. So me and my brilliant intellect go, well, that could have been just luck. Could have been luck. So, so I, next morning, I do the same thing. I get up and I said, you got to do something that I didn't have nothing to do with. I got to see that. He says, okay. The, mil- the millions of dollars isn't enough to prove. <laughs> no, it wasn't even about the money. It was like, is this real? Is this working? Is this how we're supposed to do? It's all about relationship. And so I, I, he, he, uh, he, he says, all right. And so I'm driving down the road and my buddy, Matt, doctor, a lot of money. He gives me a call. He goes, Mick. I go, yeah. He goes, you know, uh, that land across the street from where you live? I said, yes, $2.5 million uh, plot. He goes, yeah, I've been getting hit a lot. Uh, I need to give it to you. I've been getting hit a lot by uh, God telling me I need to give it to you. So I cry in my eyes out because he did something that I had nothing to do. I pulled the car over. I was like, this is ridiculous. And in two days, I went from just making it to six million bucks. And it was like, just because I decided to create my day, not let my day create me. Did you sit there and create it thinking of finances or was it just something like show me? The first day I thought of finances. Wow. And so that's where you got. And that's what I got. Yeah. Then now I go up and I, you know, when I'm do I do do meditation every morning. I, I'm thinking of who can, who, who needs help? Who needs a, a, somebody to step in? Who, I'm not about me anymore. I'm about how I can give some power to somebody else. How can I help them? What, what, who should I be praying for? Who should I be thinking about? That kind of thing. When I read that part in your book, it really touched me. Um, matter of fact, I, I couldn't even read really past that for a couple of days because something in the way that you walk through that meditation, creating that day, that first meditation for you, um, somehow triggered something in my mind where I was, I was too walking through that with you by reading it. Um, what changed for me is that I stopped seeing God as like a man, That's like right. my father exactly. or like a person. I saw him for whatever reason. And I have, I have ever since seen God, in this way, but this huge light, this big source love, this, it. it's just and, then, and, and forever, whatever and it ever, takes, ever, whatever it was, right. but what it allowed me to do, right. honestly, was release myself from holding him accountable for whatever, whatever everybody else has done to me, whatever I didn't get in my childhood, yep. daddy not being there, mommy being the way, and I was in front of God. That's right. And to think that he had created me right. was a, like a miracle. I mean, he created you I'm so human, special. I'm, I'm, I'm this soul. I'm this right. spirit. I'm this flesh right. now. And but he created you so special to do amazing things. But see, most of the kids now, they have an identity issue. Mm-hmm. And they end up killing themselves in school. There's a lot of kids that kill themselves mm-hmm. because they don't know who they are. No. But if they can believe, see, I'm a scientist. I know evolution is not true. I'm sorry but I know it because it violates the second law of thermodynamics chemistry six times. Can't be. If a theory violates a law, you throw the theory out. But I don't want to get into that. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. So the, the big thing is that they just don't see their greatness. And they think, you know, and they get hidden in these video games all by themselves. And I'm not opposed to video games, but don't go by yourself. It's like you get sucked in and then you start to doubt who you are, how amazing you are. And all you ever hear is how bad you did. And why didn't you do this right? And why didn't you do that right? And um, you start to believe it. Yeah, I think that um, a lot of us in life sometimes feel like God is a used at it up in the sky. Right. Um, and how do we know that he really loves us? The Bible tells us so, but what is that? You know, uh, exactly. How do, we how, get do, the how do I know that he really loves me? And right. you have these moments where you have this faith, et cetera. But I think a lot of us, 
don't admit that we do have those moments where um, we feel like we're alone. He's not there. He forgot about us. Um, you know, maybe he was with me for a moment, but now, right. you know, I'm on the back burner or there's other people that are more important in life than, you. you know, dealing with what I'm praying about. So I think that uh, this really kind of relates back to, again, the thought when you realize that God is God, the science behind your thoughts, mm -hmm. um, forgiveness, letting go of everything, mm -hmm. not holding God accountable for what everybody's done to you. Or what you've done to You're yourself. You're not a victim of what you've done to yourself. Right. Exactly. And you create this relationship almost instantaneously with God where it's you and faith and your thought and how things are supposed to be, like how you're meant to to live life. Right. Exactly. And, you know, don't get freaked out by God. It can be God's source, higher power, right. whatever makes mm -hmm. you comfortable, be that thing and let it just keep guiding you to the truth of whatever the actual truth is. Don't stop seeking because where you stop seeking is the rut you're going to sit in. Keep growing, keep growing. And as you grow, you help me. The uh, letting life happen thing is something that always gets you to, it seems like we bring that subject up and you're like, I just, you know, talk about that. When you, you when you talk about letting people letting life happen, well, just you, letting life happen, leaving it up to God. Well, yeah, my or heart, whatever their source is. There's there's two things you can walk in power, which is, but or you can walk in force, which is tiring as heck. When you try to force something, it takes so much energy, and and so when you're just walking and doing what you're supposed to do in power, it's light, it's easy, it's a piece of cake. It's when you're trying to force something. This should happen by now, and this should happen this time, and this should, and it, and it's exhausting. And uh, you're trying to force something that's not time yet. So that means when you have this thought and you're wanting it and you let it go, because some people say, "Man, I I thought this and I had you know pictured it and I put it down and I never thought about it again, and then boom, it's there." Mm -hmm. So you're not forcing it. What's the difference between that and um, focusing intensely on a thought? Well, or something that you really want to happen because and of course this some change. you already believe is supposed to be so and so you've let it go you know it, 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 you, you thought you think the thought you know it feels right and you let it go you celebrate actually you say yes i know it's going to happen how many times you Thank said you for i just know this is going to happen i knew it i knew it i knew it and you're right you see that's the hard thing we're always right because you let it go you celebrated that it is going to happen i posted something on the website the other day about uh you said Life is fair according to, yeah. say that, uh -oh. give us the meme or the quote. What did you Life say? Life is always fair, right? But, but uh, it may not be what you really want because it's, it's fair. fair according to the way that you're thinking. thinking. It's fair based on your thoughts and the intents of your heart. So it's fair. That's your fruit. Okay, I don't like that fruit. Okay, then let's think new thoughts. Let's think a new way. Let's create a new reality. Let's understand how, but you can't do any of that until you understand who you are, how amazing you are. Because when you can understand that I'm allowed to be wealthy, I'm allowed to be healthy, I'm allowed to have many, many friends, then you can. Okay, so something else you have in your book, which again, I gotta you know, share with everybody is uh, we are energy and we cannot expand this, we cannot um, eliminate it, we are, we are this and what we can do and have the power over is to alter it to manipulate it that's that yep. nobody has any more greater power than anybody else nope. it's just how you're altering your power so that's that right. leaves you accountable for what you have in your life going on mm -hmm. so if somebody's sitting there complaining about their life it's literally that's what you're doing with your ball of energy you're turning creating. your power over to them here right you're, you're, you're saying here here's my power let you, you go ahead and take it because I'm so sad. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Things are happening to me. I'm a victim. And uh, you turn your energy over to them. You give them the power. The world right now is trying to keep us down. It, you, we, we look at all of our differences, black, white, Chinese. and, extent, and But when the gen genomicists did this study, we're 99.99% .99 exactly the same. So they came, Stanford University came to the fact that there is one race, the human race, and that's it. But we are taught to focus on all our differences. And when we're right. focused on our differences, we're divided. Separated. And when we're just divided, we're weak. Right. Right. And so then we become victims. 
oh, I wish the government would do this or I wish the government would do that. No, you change this and all that will change. So you're also uh, more powerful when you have, uh, where one or more gathered, it states in the Bible, but that could be negative and that can be positive uh, regardless. It, exactly. You so you can't destroy your energy. You cannot create it. It is what it is and it's how you are spending your thoughts, That's right. your feelings. Right your heart and your mind right. is what you're creating in your world. Most of the time we're just responding. We're not creating. So somebody out there unhappily married, you ha you, it's fair because it's what you're thinking. You're not doing things to change yeah, your and marriage. Even unhappily married. I mean, I went through a period where my wife started speaking into me all the things she wanted. Oh, you're just a great, you always remember my stuff. You're always a great, you're a great husband. You remember my birthdays. You're, and as she's saying that, I start to believe it as a truth. Mm -hmm. And then I start to do it. That's why words build or words tear down. Tear down. You're never going to do that. He always forgets my anniversary. He always forgets this. He always, and you pretty much the guy goes, you know what? I'm a loser. The heck with it. Um, talk is, is, where does ego come into play here? Well, uh, ego to me is edging God out. It means it's all about you. But see, the key to this is it's not about you. It's about the energy working through you for everybody else. Because everybody was born with a purpose. You also have a list of questions that people can read, like 20 questions right. to help you find your purpose. Because right. a lot of people don't know what their purpose is. And that's just if they're like listening and thinking, wow, I am just letting life kind of happen. Or I really don't know what direction. They can right. read your book, right. get a sense of direction of where their purpose is. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, now you have purpose. You're, now you know what to do when you're having a thought of something you may like to change or to create in your world, what's going on scientifically in the mm -hmm. background that has to happen. It's not like it glitches like the internet. Right. It has to happen. That's exactly right. And even when it does, and it always looks like it's not going to happen and stay the course, it'll happen. It's like they always say that it's always darkest before the dawn because dawn, you stayed the course. No, I know it's going to happen. I don't care what you guys say. I know it's going to happen. Okay. I keep on seeing this come across the, uh, you know, social media fact or feelings, fact or feelings. Right. Talk to us about this because everybody is going, you base your decision on fact, uh, which is more powerful, obviously. Well, feeling. Feeling. And then everybody knows, every salesman knows that people make buying decisions based on feelings, even though they think they've written down all the facts. The final thing is, okay, let's do it. And when, is, when can it be here? Well, that's an emotion, Jack. You were buying that based on the feeling, not on the facts. So you took all the facts down, but the actual buying decision was made on feeling. Feeling is the most important thing. The heart, you know, there's a, there's a study done on the heart that shows that it's a power center. They me measure the heart's power with a magnemometer. And, and th th this is a science, again, real science. Love it. But they really, Bring it. <laughs> they, and they find out when you do a heart transplant, some of the memories of that person get transplanted into the other person because there's 40,000 ganglion in the heart. So you're wondering why they found two murderers when the heart transplant from the person who was murdered got put into the new person. All of a sudden, they could see the guy that was actually killed, did the, the killing of that person, and they arrested him and convicted him. One lady's sitting there on the couch, <laughs> she's watching football, smoking a cigarette and drinking a beer. And she found out, and she never did that, but she found out the guy she got the heart from, that's what he did every Sunday. Wow. So she started taking on. She took on some of his character. Why am I doing this? Because, <laughs> you know, the heart has power and the heart has memory. And we try to put the heart down as just a pump, but it's so much more than a muscle. It actually mm -hmm. is the truth center. So it's the truth center. Can you, you can obviously change your heart with your mind. You can. You change your heart. And we're telling you how, right? Repetition, starting to believe in your, the first thing is identity. Then the second thing is purpose. Know who you are. Then you can know why you are. And who are the, what are the two questions we always ask? Who am I? Why am I? Because we're just trying stuff. What am I here for? What am I here for? And the only way you're ever going to hear that is if you get quiet. And then you can know. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard to be quiet. All right. So I want to jump on this because this excited me too. This is that um, sound test that I read in your book that mm. they did. So what they did was attach, I guess, headphones. Mm -hmm. And they said, you're going to hear 100% sound equally on each side. 
Mm -hmm. And the person, every time they would make a sound, he would say, confirm, yes, 100% equally on each side. They had the monitoring uh, system locked up so nobody could get to it. Right. And the tape itself was locked up so nobody could change anything. So nobody could do anything with it. The guy breaks, he comes back, and they say, okay, from now on, you're going to hear 25% less in your right ear and 100% on the left ear. So they go through the sounds, and he confirms, yes, it's 25% less on the right ear, 100% on the left. And indeed, they go (coughs) back to the records, and nothing had been changed at all. Right. Nobody could touch it. Right. The, The records recorded that the sound actually changed in the tape in the tape because he thought yep he changed. that it was 25 percent. he changed the reality of the recording they were trying to work on a placebo without effect. him even knowing right yeah. it was they were working on a placebo effect to see if they could get him to hear what they say it was but what they weren't expecting was he he said i heard it and they were like oh yeah we're right but no he actually changed the tape that it was exactly what he heard and that messed them up. Oh, Stanford University again, I think. So that that is fascinating. That means that you're literally what you think is creating, even in, you know, recordings. Yes. The, the, all of the information was locked up. Yep. No one no could, one could get touch to it. it. No. And then they played it and they went. So it's, We're talking it, metal and sound frequencies. Yep. And because of his energy, it, thinking he, that it was going to be Not just thinking, 20- he knew. He, he knew, knew, right? Because they told we him. We can think all day, but when we know, now stuff changes. Wow. Okay, now, the energy generators, the vibrations, Princess Diana, O.J. Simpson, and the Twin Towers. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about that. Oh, well, these are generators that they measure um, the energy of people, the, 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 the people's energy, the, the people, the population. And so, uh, like Princess Di, right before she um, uh, got killed, there was a giant energy spike as if the, everyone in the universe knew something was going to happen. Mm. And this was done with three energy generators. And they were like, why is there a spike here? And all of a sudden, now she's dead. And then the 911, a half hour before 911 happened, they had 26 uh, energy generators measuring the energy. It spiked crazy, biggest spike they'd ever seen. And then a half hour later, it, the thing happened because we are entangled with everything. So we we know knew. everything. We just don't want to know that we know. We want to blind ourselves. But the, these generators can actually measure the energy of the people. And when they saw these spikes, they go, what's going on? Something's happening. Boom, 911. Planes wrecking. Uh, something else that this kind of made me think about the other day when I was um, doing research to interview you is unworthiness and you had mentioned um, $17 million <laughs> and, and people feeling like when they win the lottery and how they blow it, if you don't feel mm-hmm. like you are worthy mm-hmm. of the money, mm-hmm. then you will you know, not spend it responsibly, lose it. You're right. just reckless. Right. Um, that made me kind of think about the fear of success. Mm-hmm. And I wonder hmm. if people feel, if they think that they have a fear of success, if it's not actually a fear of success, they think that, that that's what's going on. Right. I might have a fear of success, but that scientifically, emotionally, mentally, it's just that they don't feel that they are worthy that's, and that's of, true. The, of what would come from it. it it's, again, it's identity. If you don't think you're worthy, even though you just won the lottery and you just put three million bucks in your pocket, they've proven 90% of the lottery winners in three years are worse off than they were before they won the lottery. They have less money because they're going to do it. If their eye is way down low, but their wallet is way up high, they're going to do everything in their power to get that wallet thing down to their comfort zone. Why? Oh, right. Because it's their comfort zone. Because it's where they're comfortable. Right. Comfort kills success. We've got to be in, we've got to be, you know, we've got to be in a place of peace, joy, and love and all things, but not comfortable. Comfort makes us, um, getting a little nudge makes us grow, makes us get better. A comfort is like a rut and there's, it's like a grave with no front or back. And we don't want to stay in that place of comfort. I just want to be comfortable. I just want to, no, 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 no. Grow, grow. And grow is not comfortable. 
So they are trying to get back. They don't even realize that what they're feeling is unworthy of the money that they just won. They don't feel like they can probably socialize with the people that would normally earn this type of Mm -hmm. money. So psychologically, they're creating circumstances around where they're blowing, blowing. They don't realize that this is what they're doing. They think that they're living the high life. But what they're really doing is creating their reality to get back to their comfort Comfort zone, zone. which is paycheck to paycheck. Exactly. That's their comfort zone. So that, that's the important thing is that we've got to not live in that comfort zone because if we, if we keep doing the same things we always did, what are we going to get? We keep getting the same things we always got. Insanity. Right? Then that's insanity, right? I expect something different. Can you please? And then so that what we do? Oh, we're going to blame it on God. That's it. Uh, God, can you please do it? He didn't do it. Mine must not be worthy. I'm not good enough. He was working on somebody else. But really, it was just me. Right. Right? That, that, that's why I said I couldn't or I said I could so if you're thinking that you might have a fear of success, it might be a deeper thought of you just might not feel worthy. Unworthiness. Yes. Unworthiness. Worthy of success. There's another reason. And that's a, that's a cycle. Psycho- you can just turn that on and off, people. This is something that you just have to be consciously aware of that you're thinking or not thinking that will switch and change everything and go... I'm not afraid of success. That's right. I just think I'm unworthy because there were five siblings and we all had to fight for the same food Mm -hmm. and I was always the one that was the lesser of and this is something that psychologically is played. Yep. That's right. And you got to unlock that in order to go, I am worthy. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of success. That's right. Because I see myself worthy now and the reason why I didn't is because... I had brothers and sisters that stuff happened. bullied me or pushed me around. or And it, wasn't, it, had no, it had no power over you until you believed what they said about stuff happening. Yes. That, that's it. Mm-hmm. And so when you hand over your power or you let people alter, manipulate your energy, that's right. where it changes your reality, where that's you start right. believing what somebody is telling you. Yep. That's exactly right. That's, that's why that's I works. love this book. I love your book. Well, I'm glad. And I just can't, like, every time we talk, I've got a list of questions that I always, I'm like, hey, Nick, you know what I was thinking the other day when I was driving? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about uh, God's will versus our own? Okay, well, and, and that, again, that's for me, being Christian, that's what my, but I'm, I don't even like Christian. I hate that. I hate the name. I hate the label. Because then there's too many people, oh, I hate Christians. Or, uh, I, I like to think of, I'm, they used to call it in the Bible, the way, following the way. And, and, and I, I like that better because it's, I'm not a Christian. Don't put a label on me. Don't identify me that way. But I am a believer in Christ and what he did because he sacrificed himself in my heart. And, and my job is to sacrifice myself for everyone else. So, you know, even in the Bible, it says, love God with all your heart, soul, and might love your neighbor as yourself. Well, you, all you are in that loop is a conduit. It's all about him and others. And when you can become all about others, you die to self. And when you die, that ego dies, ego dies because it ain't about you. But when you die to self, all of a sudden, all the stuff you always wanted is here. So you also, to get a little biblical here, you say that God has given us authority to come to come into this, Mm -hmm. to be on the earth, to take dominion and power. So that means that we have, we're here as human. Mm-hmm. We have this faith, the dominion and power of authority mm-hmm. is the science, the energy that we have to go here, to be here, yeah. and to change, to live life how we want, to create, yeah. and know that where this comes from is our higher power. Is our higher power. That's exactly right. I mean, we, we do have that power, but if we don't believe we have that power, then we don't have that power. If we believe stuff happens to us, then that's what happens. Stuff happens to us. But if we believe we happen to stuff, then that's what happens. We happen to stuff. The Power of Now is a book I'm sure you've read. Uh, yeah, I love it. I know. I love it Tolle. too. Oh, I was listening to the other day while I was working out. Yes, I do that. I listen to that kind of stuff when I work out. <laughs> uh, all that is essential is invisible to the eye. That's right. And what he's saying is the unseen realm is the real realm. But the scene, even the Bible says that. When we create, when God created everything, if you believe in the Bible and what it says, then he used the word bara to create from nothing. Now, he laid it all up there for us. Our job is to asah, 
take, and that means to take what he's already created and bring it into the same realm. He's laid up such nice, amazing things for all of us in the unseen. All we got to do is have faith and grab it from the unseen and the seen. It's based on our identity, our belief and who we are and why we deserve it. Cause it ain't about us. It's about what we're going to do with it. Right. So if we don't believe that we are good, if we don't believe that we're here to create change, help each other, yeah. uh, spread love, um, heal, yeah. um, help change the world, exactly. all of that, then we don't have, I mean, we do have, we just, we don't spend our, our energy power that way. We That's have right. the power to do it. Right. And energy turned in on itself. It ends up being stagnant energy. You end up feeling nasty because you're only focusing on me, 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 my, and you end up a lot of people killing themselves. They're so focused on themselves that they take their own life because is that like a trapped energy it's, kind it's, of thing? it's like it's in exactly and energy is meant to flow it's meant to get out it's meant to go um what about those people that seem like they got it all figured out See, were they just born with this ability to like you know well let's take uh, i'll take jewish people for example jewish people uh -oh. <laughs> well, sorry for jewish people but Jewish people have the great ability because they've been told since they were little, you're amazing. You're fantastic. Your moms are always telling them how great they are. And you know what? Son of a gun, they believe it. And because they believe it, they know that they should have a lot of money. They know they should be in charge of the movie industry. They know they should be in charge of the radio and TV. They know that. And because they know that, it is so. You know, I don't know where I picked this up in life. I really don't. But. For some reason, I always thought I was special. You I, are. I am special. I believe that now. But to have that um, feeling as a little girl, mm -hmm. uh, but my surroundings didn't reflect that so much. Got it. Um, but for some reason, there was always this feeling that this energy, something inside of me mm -hmm. that I felt like I'm special. Yep. And, you know, life happens and then things tell you that you're not. And you start to believe them. And then you start to believe it. And then so you, I've always had that ability to, to change right. that. Well, that's why you're here doing a radio program because you believe you're special. That's right. Uh, I want to touch on the topic really quickly about people that struggle because we've got new age thinking and mm -hmm. this woo woo stuff mm -hmm. and uh, not that that's, I mean, that's power and energy. How sure, you spend sure. it that way. But people out there that are religious that um, would say this is to new age mm -hmm. and the new age that would say this is to, how do people deal with the conflict of, of not like, for instance, when I started actually reading the power of positive thinking, mm -hmm. Then I thought I had a feeling like I was taking the power out of God's hands mm -hmm. and I was in control of mm -hmm. everything. And so that was good for a while because it worked. Right, sure, You're like, sure. holy, I'm going to manifest this and then right. boom, all of a sudden. Right, right. But then I felt like I was my own God. I felt like I was doing my own right. thing. And then I felt like I was um, being disobedient obedient even not having a relationship with god i don't want to fuck up right. i don't want to end yeah. up going to you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i, I want to get this right right so uh how do you tell people how do you explain that how do how do they connect the two that's what i love about your book though because it's the science and it's the right. faith well but, there's there's so many scriptures that tell us we're supposed to have all this amazing stuff but religion has told them Oh, well, no, you're supposed to be humble. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be flat busted and disgusted. Mm -hmm. And you should be happy to just drive a little VW. It says, I love Jesus on the back <laughs> of it, right? But who's going to want to follow that? Right. But if I have a Bentley mm -hmm. and people are, now I'm influencing people of wealth. When I influence them, everyone under them gets influenced. You know, I've yes. been to a lot of countries. I've talked to princes and I've talked to uh, imams in the Muslim nation. And I believe for me that it, the business is the stealth mode of getting the truth into others' cultures. Wow. So, yeah. you, so if, if you have a business that you love, that the thing you're supposed to do, if you don't have a passion and you're in a business, it's a job, J-O-B, just over broke. You got to get into the thing that you love and you're passionate about. You surround yourself with a business vehicle and you can't fail because you have passion. You have the fuel. It's like a little race car. You've got the, the GPS system, you're following your gut. You've got the fuel, which is your passion, and you've got the vehicle, which is your business, and you're going to your destiny. 
So it, it's so important that we understand that it's just the stealth mode for the purpose that you were created for. And each purpose person was created for a purpose. And the purpose is so amazingly big, but we limit ourselves how high we can go. We don't think that we can, and so we don't, or we can't. Right. Okay, I'm going to bring this right back to, you know, these uh, motivational, you know, YouTube right. videos that you can turn on. Um, now I hope that the listeners have been educated and, and, and now have consciousness to what they're thinking, what they're doing, what they're creating, because now they can listen to these types of things and know what to do with it thereafter. I think a lot of people, again, listen to this, they're on fire for a moment, and then they walk back into their normal world, yep. and then shit hits the fan, they're caught and up it's in another a, day. And it's, and it caught up into emotion. As soon as you get caught up into emotion, there's no value in it. you got to believe it in your heart. When it begins believe in your heart, now it's real for you. But right. We get caught up in emotion. Now we got 20 people all jumping around, 30 people all jumping around. This is the same as churches. Oh, and I am that, and I am that. And then they get out into the world, and all of a sudden, they're just the way they always were. And they're a victim and they're no good and they can't do it and because they didn't believe it in their heart. So if you listen to these types of um, motivational, motivational speaking, speaking um, words, then you guys have got, it's your responsibility to take it further. I mean, you just have to, it's, it's your life. You're not going to hurt anybody but yourself. You're yeah. not going to, nobody's going to enjoy it more than you. Yeah. So, and the big thing is, uh, is allow yourself to be great. Allow yourself to dream the dreams. How many times do we just shut down a dream, you know, because it didn't happen the way we thought it was going to happen? Allow yourself to keep dreaming the dreams. It'll happen the moment it's supposed to happen. I want to challenge everybody. Let's just do like a 30-day challenge where you just every day throughout the day or at night before you go to bed, just start saying to yourself, I am worthy. Mm -hmm. I am worthy. Out loud, you have to say it. I am worthy. And see how that changes how you start looking at money and things that are coming to you, even how you give. Yep. It's not all about receiving. I think the best part is giving. But here's the thing. So many people, especially in the Christian realm, can give all day long, but they don't know how to receive. Oh, no, 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 I don't need that. Oh, no, 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 no. You're blocking a blessing from them by not receiving. It's supposed to come to you. It's not about you. Receive it, and then you can give it to wherever you're supposed to or keep it for yourself. But, you know, but we, we, we so used to saying, no, 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 oh, no, no, I, I got that. Don't worry about that. No, no, receive it. There's something that um, nobody really knows about me. I don't tell too many people, but every night that I go to bed, I listen to a motivational manifestation voices, creating. sounds, creating it. Yeah. Because, um, I feel like there's so much that I want to experience in life, and that's why I do it. I'm not afraid to fail. Right. I could totally fail. I'm fine. As long as I've given it a chance and I know that I've given it my all, then I've given birth to it. It is, yep. It's fine for me to fail. It's, it's, I, what I couldn't live with is not trying. I can't live with the, what if I would have done that? Right. So I just do it, and people, you know, ask everything it is I do and I say everything that is that I want and I mean that and I live that and yeah. it's so so true well let me just say that about failure you got to reframe it for me I had to reframe it the only failure is not trying so right. even if I don't I stumble I keep going forward mm -hmm. so I haven't failed I learn stuff right and I keep going forward I'm not going to put that label failure on it because I haven't failed because I haven't quit and then we can keep going forward. The only reason why I've gotten where I am and as strong as I am, I feel, is because of the things that I have uh, failed at or, mm -hmm. you know, people letting me down or whatever. The guy just, it just makes me stronger. And, and you got to be that's careful. That's what I do with it. Uh, of your friends around you. Absolutely. Because what they're going to do, family especially, oh, you can never do that. You're no good. You're just like your father. You're going to be able to do that. I mean, I couldn't do No, what they're really saying is I can't do it. Right. But you were created for that thing. They're projecting that out so on you. Because you know what happens? If you do better, if you stand in the purpose, if you do the thing you're called to do, all of a sudden, everyone else has to look at themselves and go, well, heck, if she can do it, I can do it. Or it holds them accountable like, oh, exactly. I didn't do, I don't have, I don't, I, I couldn't do it. Yep. I didn't do it. So it makes them look and feel bad. So yep. you've got to be careful. Who uh, you share with. with. And they always say the five people at your table. 
you know, I sit there and I, I want to be really the dumbest one at the table. Good. And I learn from them. And it is really important for people to sit down and who are the five people that are in your life that are, are the closest that you spend your time with. What type of energy are they putting out there? Do exactly. they want to see you win? Are they lifting you up? Are they tearing you down? Are they keeping you you know, well, you end up becoming who you hang with. Mm -hmm. Okay. The so average. if you're hanging with a bunch of coconuts, you're going to be a coconut. <laughs> so, but if you're hanging with a bunch of successful people, I had to sit in Phoenician in the, in the lobby to allow myself to receive wealth. So I wanted to get vibrating with that frequency of being in the Phoenician with all these people. Love and it. then as soon as I got comfortable with that, it was so. Yes. But I have to be comfortable with it. So I have to do different things. So I'm sitting on a Phoenician and like, what is this guy doing? Having a cup of coffee. But no, I'm vibrating, being cool with it until I was comfortable. So I can be here. And then when I allow, my wife did the same thing. We're buying this $2.7 million house on the hill in Los, Los Angeles. And she's from a small little teen town and had nothing. We had to sit on that land uh, about three weeks in a row so that she could actually receive the fact that she could be here. So we'd sit on the land in little lawn chairs and look out over the valley, right? I love this. And then finally she says, you know what? I could, I could live here. Boom, the loan closed, next day. So that's lining with the <clears throat> say your I am worthies, you guys, or go sit at the uh, hang, hang out Phoenician with yeah. and have a cup of coffee and start absorbing the energy and, and change your environment so that you're, rising, you're raising your vibration uh, and the thing is, it's not bad to do that because, you know, Miriam Williamson does a whole thing about when she has a great poem about how, how when you become great, you give permission for others to become great because it's not about you. You're becoming great so that they can become great. And then when you're giving it back that way, it, it makes, you know, so many people like to judge people instead of giving them a hand up. They just like to point the finger. And mm -hmm. so this is what that is. That your growth is not just for you, but it's for everyone around you. Right. And then you change and you get to share with them. Look, I used to think like you. Exactly. People because, go, how did you get there? Exactly. Well, I used to drink. No, you didn't. Yes, I used to drink every day. No, you did not. I, 21 years, I haven't had a drink. No way in 21 years you haven't had a drink because they can't fathom that. Then all of a sudden you tell them stories about forming common union. You know, communication is the process of forming common union. So you start to talk their language and they go, yeah, yeah. How do you know I'm thinking that? Because I, I did. Right. And then all of a sudden they go, well, maybe it is possible. Um, I have three questions that I always ask every single okay. guest. Uh, okay. So where is the love in your story? My love is, is the love for the empowerment message to people so that they can actually achieve the greatness that they are instead of settling for the place they settled for. You know, just because your mom and dad were there, just because your brothers are there, doesn't mean you have to be there. So my love is for the people themselves to find the truth, truth seeking, truth. Keep digging, keep digging. You'll get there. And that was the intention of your book. That's the whole intention of the book. And what is the life? The lie is that we have no power, dominion, and authority. The lie is that we are just victims in this big old vast universe and we have no power at all to create the reality we live in. So we're just going to do whatever the man says and just try to get comfortable and not rock too many boats. And what is the truth? The truth is that we have all power, dominion, and authority, and that we create the reality we live in. And it doesn't matter what language you use, science, the language of science, the language of neuroscience, the language of frequency, or the language of the Bible, they all say the same thing because there is only one truth. And in, in all faiths. In all faiths. It doesn't matter. There is only one truth. Thank you, Dr. Nick. Thank you. I appreciate being here. I really enjoy this. I can't wait for everybody to hear this. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Uh, there you got it. The Truth by Dr. Nick Castellano.